Welcome to this presentation about the characteristics of skilled performers. A quick link to our syllabus and you can see that under the heading assessment of skill and performance the first part looks at the characteristics of skilled performers and the examples given are kinesthetic sense, anticipation, consistency and technique. Now there is a large difference between the movements of a skilled performer and those of an unskilled performer. The observable differences include kinesthetic sense, anticipation, consistency and technique. There is a, a huge difference between the movements of a skilled performer and those of an unskilled performer. Even inexperienced judges, um, these movements of skilled performers have certain observable qualities. It looks smooth, it looks effortless, uh, it's free-flowing, and it's usually always successful. Now moving on to kinesthetic sense. A skilled performer has well-developed kinesthesis or kinesthetic sense. The performer's kinesthetic sense allows them to feel the movement as they perform it. Inexperienced performers make mistakes because their muscle memory is not fully developed. But highly skilled players are especially alert to the movements uh, and the errors that are made and they're even able to make corrections uh, as or modifications uh, while executing the movement. Improved kinesthesis is a direct result of practice. Now the example that I'm about to give you uh, looks at Michael Jordan. Uh, his ability to adapt under pressure situations and modify his technique even whilst airborne was considered uh, quite extraordinary. Uh, he was one of the finest basketballers ever and his kinesthetic sense was just remarkable. So if we just take a look at this next little clip, you can see there that Michael Jordan's able to adjust what he's doing whilst in midair. You can see that the purple defender has jumped up to try and knock the ball out and Michael Jordan's able to feel his movement so well, have so much control over what he's doing that he can adjust midway through. And that's the difference between a very successful, skillful performer and just an average performer. The next one is anticipation or the next characteristic. Now skilled performers are better able to predict what may happen in specific situations. They can quickly and easily predict the possible flight path of the ball, the speed of the ball, the direction of a pass or the direction in which an opponent may move or pass. This skill allows them added time in which to respond and they can then give more attention to outmaneuvering their opponent. Anticipation is particularly important in externally paced activities where fast movement and decision making are necessary, such as cricket, baseball, tennis and squash. It leads to better timing of responses. Uh, a skillful performer can vary the pace of a movement to confuse the opponent and prevent them from anticipating the action so they can deceive their opponent better as well. The ability to predict actions can also provide more opportunity to ensure the movement is performed smoothly and with coordination. Now, this little video here of Roger Federer. Roger Federer is a very smooth, uh, very fluent tennis player. He's probably considered the best tennis player of all time. That's probably disputed or argued by many, but uh, his record speaks for itself. But his ability to anticipate his opponents is just unbelievable. I mean, in this clip, it's slightly sped up, but you can see for him to be able to run to the net, retrieve the ball, run to the back, and then hit a, a winner between his legs to the other side of the net is just remarkable. So his ability to predict where the player is going to hit and taking notice of the important cues that the other player is putting out there. So 
the important actions that they are, um, you know, the way that they're using their body, the way that they point their racket, the way they turn their shoulders and move, Roger Federer is able to decode that, be able to take notice of it, and that informs the direction in which he takes, and he's able to get to the ball a lot quicker. Now, there's a very good clip that I want you to take a look at when you get the opportunity. Um, it's just a, a rally between Andy Murray uh, and another another player, a lesser-known player. Um, if you can just follow that link and take a look, it's a really amazing Australian Open um, highlights package and some great anticipation, some great rallies, which really shows the power and importance of anticipation in tennis. Now, Cristiano Ronaldo is a highly skilled soccer player, um, and there's another clip that I'd like you to watch as well when you get the opportunity. Um, there's a, a pretty neat little documentary about Cristiano Ronaldo's anticipation and ability to predict what's going to happen in terms of where the ball is going to be, and also some other uh, experiments that have been done to look at his kinesthetic sense as well so when comparing him to an unskilled athlete so when you get an opportunity please watch that as well now just a bit more on Cristiano Ronaldo you can see here his superb touch uh, with the with the feet is pretty amazing um, he's able to control the ball so well and it takes a lot of skill to be able to control the ball the way he does. Obviously, his ability to anticipate where the ball's going to land, okay, and obviously his kinesthetic sense in the sense that he's able to get his foot to the right position to, to trap the ball, to know where his opponent is behind him and be able to change direction to deceive that opponent all comes down to kinesthetic sense, anticipation, and the next couple of skilled characteristics that we'll look at, consistency and technique. Now, consistency. Skilled performers show much more consistency than unskilled performers. In other words, the skilled performer is able to perform the desired movement repeatedly, over and over again. And again, Tennis is, is a great sport to use here. The, the capacity of tennis players to hit the ball back over the net at high speed and find a space on the court close to the lines, pushing their opponent either side of the court, that demonstrates great consistency to be able to stay in the rallies, clear the net, keep the ball in play. Um... If you have a look here, I'm using soccer as another example. This is Tim Cahill, um, Socceroos player, and this is the famous goal that he scored in the last World Cup um, against the Netherlands. Now, Tim Cahill sc has scored a number of goals, and over the last few years he's been easily the, the most consistent goal scorer for the Australian team. And what is it about Tim Cahill that makes him able to, to get the ball in the net Okay, great practice, um, confidence, his anticipation and ability to get himself in the position to score the goal. His superior technique allows him to contact the ball very, very well each time. And, and that helps him to be consistent. Whenever he gets up into the scoring range or the scoring zone, I should say, the striking zone, he's able to, to hit the ball uh, into the net fairly regularly with great precision. Here's another example of Tim Cahill. Not only with his feet, he's able to get his head to the ball quite regularly as well. Again, his superior technique, his anticipation, um, his kinesthetic sense, so his ability to know where the ball is where his head needs to be to contact that ball in the right place, the ability to adjust his position whilst he's in the air. Great example of how all of these skill characteristics link together. Allows him to score plenty of goals. Now, technique is our next characteristic. 
Technique is a procedure or practical method applied to a particular task. For example, if the task is to serve a tennis ball, good techniques have been established whereby players can learn to carry out the procedure in the most effective manner. An observable characteristic of skilled performers is technique. Good technique is required um, and it's developed through practice and game related techniques. Taking a look at these videos here, you can see on the left is an unskilled golfer. It's actually Charles Barkley, who's a basketball player. Obviously not a golfer, but you can see his technique is very strange, very odd. Uh, he, his technique, he, he lowers himself quite low as he goes to strike for the ball. Now, if you have a look at the little image, um, to the right, you can see a more upright posture is required to drive the ball and follow through. You can see the body is in quite good alignment. So technique is really important for golf to be able to hit the ball um, and get it out there. Here's some footage of Tiger Woods, a, uh, a great golfer, very successful golfer. And you can see again he's quite upright. He's striking the ball very, very well. Um, he's not leaning too far down. You can see he follows through and his eyes follow through in the direction of the hit. Now there's some advantages of good technique. Economical movement is an important concept to think about. So less energy is used when a good technique is applied. Only the essential muscles are used, so therefore those muscles that aren't used are rested, saved, and that actually contributes to the less amount of energy used. It's aesthetically pleasing. It actually looks better. If you look at sports like high jump, javelin, okay, even the 100-meter sprint, the technique, just the good technique or the effective technique actually looks good. It flows, it's fluent, it's graceful. There's a much higher chance of success. It's biomechanically correct. I need you to consider a javelin throw again and what it looks like. Better chance of withstanding pressure. A good technique will stand up to pressure from the opposition. A good forehand in tennis um, will stand up to pressure. A powerful shot from an opponent over the net. There's less chance of sustaining injury because it's biomechanically correct. And we learn in sports medicine that overuse injury can occur if technique is poor over time. So um, sports like swimming, uh, sports like running, where the, the technique can often lead to an overuse injury, good technique will reduce that. And good technique is fundamental to achieving at a high level. Thank you very much for listening to this presentation.